Okay, good morning. We are going to pick up this video where we left off before we, we just got back from Arizona, but we're going to pick up the build and then we'll do the little trip after that. So let's just get going on this and I'll show you where we are. Okay, so for this little project, I'm just going to use a piece of 3 8 inch ACX plywood. I was going to go get some really nice plywood, but you know, I have this and I think there's only a little bit of it going to show. You have the mattress and then about six or eight inches gonna have some little cubbies to shove your proposal. That's what I'm gonna do there. Here is my pad. I'll mark this out, cut the top of it. Okay, so I've cut a little piece of carpet to go in the bottom of that little forward cabinet. There's the face of that cabinet, it's sanded. I cut the holes out and routed those a little bit so they're nice and smooth. Here's the piece of carpet that I cut out of, an old piece that I used on the van years ago. So up inside here, you can kind of see what I have going there. I have a piece of carpet cut and it's not laying down flat. It will relax itself and I'm not going to glue that down. It's just going to lay in there. I'm going to cut a couple little pieces of carpet for on these sides just so it finishes it out. And I'm only going to screw that face plate on so that it can be removed. I think this is going to be fine for what I'm using it for. So I got this face frame all sanded. I got the holes all drilled in it for the screws. It's all cut out, sanded. So I'm going to use some of this Kona stain that I have left over from a job we did a while back and uh, it's going to just be a little different. This is the bedroom. This isn't the kitchen. So the kitchen's going to be the white color and this is going to be a dark color. Oh, it's going to look so nice. Just a piece of ACX plywood but all finished out like this. Should look pretty good. I'll get a couple coats of finish on this after I do this. This is the same color I used on the countertop in the van when I built the van a few years ago. I'll just continue on with that. Show you when it's done. And there's that. Let that dry. Okay, let's stick these little darts up where they go. This one goes over on that side. This one goes over on this side. I'm just going to stick them up there and I'll smooth them out a little bit better as time goes on. Kind of unnecessary, but it does finish out. When you're laying in bed and you're looking inside that cabinet, you'll see a little piece of fuzzy carpet instead of the foam, foam core. I'm going to move this just so I don't put my feet in it. Alrighty, here we go. That's it. Little piece of carpet. That's it. Well, that one fits pretty good. That one's not so good. It's good enough. I think I'll just stick this in here and let it sit in place. It can just dry in here. Give us something to look at while we're doing the rest of this stuff. That's just gonna get screwed. Yeah, and then it has a six inch mattress that comes right about to the bottom of those cubbies and you just shovel your stuff up in there. Clothes, socks, underwear. I guess you could put your dirty clothes there too, but the dirty clothes kind of, I have a little spot down here by the head for those. Okay, so there is the overhead panels. I patterned off and laying on the plywood. I laid them out the way I think I want the ceiling to go. I got the uniform color on the plywood the best I could. So that is the ceiling panels. I'm gonna get busy cutting those out. Okay, so the ceiling panels are dry fit. Let's just go take a look. There's the patterns we used. And come inside the camper here. And there is the overhead. So they're just dry fit right now. 
I haven't fit in there, so the fuzzy is going to trim this edge right here. I'm going to have to have a batten across this one. A little angled batten across this one, covering that joint. That should be pretty good up there. If not, I might need a little piece of trim there. But all around all the edges, it's going to work just with the fuzzy going up the little bit of carpet stuff I'm using. So there's the overhead fit. Fit around the hatch, ready for the trim ring on that once I put these in for good. Yeah, that's it for today. Okay, so we are back in the cabin here. So I came up with this little setup for a little table here. I put my brackets in for a drawer, and then I rethought the process, and I put these little angle brackets in here. You can see these metal angle brackets that I fabricated out of an old piece of aluminum. So this is a little table now when you're sitting at the, when you're sitting here in the thing, you've got a little table that, you can, that slides under. Gonna have a little, that's gonna have a little face on it, and then I'm making a drawer that fits in here. Now I made this opening a little too big for a drawer. I, I didn't think this out as well as I sh should have when I did it, but you know I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it work. So in here we have the drain all in, the sinks in. We have our 110 power. It's all in. Not sure if I showed all that down there. I have my 110 and my 12 volt that goes for the TV and the refrigerator that runs down there. So over here we have our switch panel, which is not hooked up yet. I had to order some more parts, and of course we have our our whole control center here. Let's go out there and put that drawer together. So here is the drawer. I have these parts all made for this. It's a big drawer. You can see how big it is. It's quite large. A little too big for a little camper like this, but you know what? It's going to be a great storage space. So I go ahead and sand the finish off of these ends where I'm going to be butt joining these together just so I get a good adhesion on my glue. So I lay those out like that. These are my two ends. So these parts are already all cut and fit. So we're just going to go ahead and glue them up and nail them together. So the bottom here is not going to get nailed. It's just going to get glued into the little rabbit that I cut into this thing. Of course, my glue is getting thick. I need to get more glue. The glue is not working out so good here. Damn it, I need more glue. Anyway, it's going to work for this. No nails needed on that. That glue is going to hold that thing solid as a rock. glue bottle okay so I am going to glue these three edges right here I'm not going to use a ton of glue just enough to hold it without a lot of schmooze out like that I'm going to put the good side to the inside that side looks like the better side go with a shorter brad. These inch and eighths are potentially going to blow out too easily.
Here we go. These are a little shorter, only one inch. Really makes a difference which way you shoot these too. You know, if you look at the ends of these, they're called chisel tips, and they're chiseled like this. So you want to do them, you want to make sure that they go in like that so that the nail is going to either curve up or down instead of out one way like that. So you're going to want to hold this sideways. Like so. Pulling that good. Be a pretty damn strong drawer. that's going to be pretty good I'll put a rocker stopper a board that goes on the top so that when you get it out like this it can't tip like that we used to call those a rocker stopper which is basically just a board that goes from here a little board that goes from here to underneath here I'll do that right now so there you have the first one you kind of get the look that little groove there so you don't have to be all perfect up to the edge of that plywood that's an old cabinet old cabinet maker showed me that little way of doing it and I kind of like it for these little projects. So I'm going to fill those holes, sand it, put some tongue oil on it. Well, I just so happened to find some walnut filler out in the van. So we're going to go ahead and just touch those holes. Just barely touch them. Barely touch them. Barely touch them. Take this over to the edge sander, sand that putty off, and true up the edges. And pretty much it's ready for, and I'll do a little sanding around, I'll, I'll break the edge a little by hand, and then I'll put some stain on. Then I'll tongue oil these babies.
that takes care of those edges really nice. I'm going to hand sand these just a little bit before I tongue oil the edges. on the camper and it's going to look like a million bucks. I already know it. Oh yeah. I get some down inside that little groove. Look at that. Nice. Such a simple little procedure but it sure makes it look so good. This is not a super duper production thing but I only have like six of these to do so it's going to go pretty quick. Right there's a little glue. That's why you want to make sure and not get any glue on them. So there you have it. That's the first cabinet door. Not bad, huh? Gonna look great. Okay, not sure where I left off here the other day. The cabinets. You see, I have the drawer. I think I showed this already. The drawer and the little table here. So I'm gonna get ready to put the countertop down. Um, ready for countertop. We have the forward little bulkhead storage compartment in. Let's turn a light on that. So that little thing is in, the overhead is in. I still have to do the trim pieces that are gonna go on these seams or battens that go across there. So the whole overhead is in. And I uh, get this countertop in, and we're gonna start doing the carpet on all these walls. Okay, you're just gonna get glue and a few screws. It doesn't need that many screws. Cause it's gonna be glued. I guess I could have pre-drilled those, but this will be fine. I want to make sure and get these good and countersunk because it's going to get plastic laminate over the top of it. are dull. I've had some of those bits since I worked at Mogitech back in 19... well in the... actually back in the 70s. fill those holes okay so I got this little edge on get a little light on this subject here so I used a solid piece of walnut here on the edge of this countertop 
So I had the seam in this plywood where these two come together. So I just ran it all the way through. I know it's going to be a little bit of a funny joint right here where the Formica just stops right here. I don't want to run the Formica all the way out. I'm just going to stop it right there and it's going to have a little bit of a funny joint right there. That's the way it goes. I'm going to go cut my Formica right now. Okay, so I need 40 and a half to do this whole thing. We'll go with 40 and 5 eighths. Give me a little extra. I'm going to route it off anyway. Get straight in for that. I got my old trusty Formica tools here, my roller. My Fernica, my uh, carbide blade here. I used them twice here in the last year. I haven't used them for years. I did the countertop over at the little house and I'm doing this. I'm gonna double check that because this is my only my only shot at this. Yeah, this is the leftover piece of Formica from the little house too. Go see how she fits in there. Boom, there it is. Get some contact cement and glue it in. So I got the Formica stuck. It's on. I'm going to get the router out. I'm going to use two different routers here. I have an offset router I'm going to use for this one because i got to get real close to that edge for cutting out that hole. And then I'm going to use just an eighth inch radius here instead of a 45 chamfer. I'm just going to use an eighth inch radius on this and just straight cut this one. Straight cut this one and um, ease the edge a little. Okay, so I have this offset router here. The base of it's not really set up just right for what I'm doing. I did find some little extenders that will work. I mean, I could go buy a special router bit to do what I'm doing here. But I'm trying to avoid buying special things. So I think this is going to work, especially if I hold it up on this piece of plywood here to get me at the right height to cut this out. I only need it for this cut right along here where it's real close to this wall. Now let me just drill a hole. my router set up down in the hole lose the control and I'm gonna see if I can route that off with this router so bear with me here all hell could break loose right here <laughs>
fantastic. You see, I only have half inch plywood for the countertop because I'm trying to keep everything lightweight on this. So my router bit just wasn't deep enough or shallow enough to make that work. So that worked out great. And that's what that offset router is for because a normal router, you just can't get it that close to a wall like that. This one here, I've had laying around for many years, worked out great. I'm going to run my little eighth inch bull nose along this edge right here now and then I'm just going to hand sand that to tune it up the way I want it. Helps if you have a battery. even more if you have a charged battery. I'll be back. I found this router uses a lot more juice than like a drill. I can sand the rest of that off. I'm not going to put the offset bit in that little thing. I'm going to sand that, clean that all up. That's my countertop. So we're down to cleaning our edges up here. So remember, down strokes only when you're filing. I'm going to cut that little tab off right there with the file. Just like that. only you're gonna chip up your Formica All right. I'm gonna go and just break that edge nice I've had this big old bastard for a long time no pun intended roll that edge over a little bit done smooth nobody's gonna cut themselves good enough sink in a hole and see if she fits. And there it is. And remember the reason for this big sink in this little camper. Oh yeah, baby. I can wash my hair, shave, if I just get my head good and clean, sponge bath, everything else off, I'm golden. So there's my countertop. Okay, so the table is glued in. I have my little jugs here filled with concrete for weight to weight that down. When that dries, I'll clean that bead of silicone off, but I have good smuction all the way around so we shouldn't have leakage. Now I'm ready to carpet these walls real soon. And then I can build my little backsplash that goes in here. Make a nice little watertight area for doing dishes, washing your hair, doing whatever you gotta do. Okay, just a little update here. So we have all the 12 volt wiring hooked up. This thing here now is hooked in through that. It comes through here. You can see it's all wired in. Turn that light on there so you can see that a little better. Okay, we have progress. That wall is up, the carpet, and we got the trim rings back on the windows. So that's in, and that is done. And this side, we have most of it done. I'm going to do a couple fillet pieces, one down there, and a couple around that window. We decided to, I'm running out of carpet, so those are going to be pieced together. We've got to do this forward bulkhead, and that rear bulkhead, and we will be done. Well, we're getting a little closer here. Let's take a look out the window here. Charles is out here helping me do the carpet. And there he is. See, he's making paper patterns. You can see him sitting on the floor over there. 
he's just laying out what he's cutting right there. And I'm working on that little piece over there. Okay, just a little upgrade. So I have the C rail on. All the trim is up, the batten's on the ceiling. We have the TV mounted, refrigerator is mounted. And that I uh, had that on all night. It's at 33 degrees right now. So yeah, I'm ready to do the door and drawer faces here and uh, oil this thing. Then all I have really left to do is make these cushions, which I'm waiting for to come in the mail, Amazon. There we are, we're getting closer. You know, I'm hoping to get down there at Quartzsite during the big tent sale and during uh, RTR, we're gonna see. Okay, so we got our first mattress. So this one here is gonna puff up to six inches. Okay, good morning, let's just take a look around. I think I've showed you most everything we've got in here so far, but we're gonna go out and work on the cabinet door and drawer faces today. So, <clears throat> the bed, we put that in yesterday. Not sure if you saw that. This little cushion, we did a mock-up on that one, and that one is pretty much what it's gonna be. We're gonna do the big one here later today, possibly. So we are gonna work on these door and drawer faces. So let's go out and take a look at these. We oiled all the walnut that are on the edges of all the cabinets here. I rewired this with a nice 12 gauge wire. That little 16 gauge wasn't quite enough, I don't think, to power the whole camper. So I redid that. Let's take a look at that real quick. So nothing has really changed except for I changed out the, the main power leads that power the whole camper up. And this one here is actually a fused, a fused power lead. So much, much better unit. My buddy Pat told me to get a fused one. So that's what I did. And here are the cabinet door and drawer faces. So we are gonna put the hinges and handles on these. And I bought these little um, earth magnets as little catches and I'm hoping they're gonna work. So get started on that. All right, so I have these laying in here the way they go in. So they, these are the cutouts that came out of these cabinets. So they're grain matched for what it's worth. You can't really see the grain that great on this plywood. And, but it is seven ply plywood. It's really nice plywood, but the finish on it could be better, just in my, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the hinges on these. I'm just going to do them one at a time so I don't get them mixed up on the grain. All right, so I'll run through one of these real quick, show you how I do my hinges. There's other ways to do it. This is just how I do it. Have for a long, long time. So you just line those up right on the edge. Put a mark. These are usually inch and a half. Move that in. Hold them square you know they got a little rock in them there's a little there's a little hint there's a little spring loaded thing in there so you want to get them as straight as you can and we draw a little circle these are all pretty much the same so you can use one hinge for your layout Oop, i'm going to mark that move it in an inch and a half Got a 1 16th inch drill bit I'm going to use as a pilot and I'm only going to go in about a quarter of an inch. I don't want to go through. A quarter of an inch. I'm going to drill it right dead center of those little circles I drew. Because if I'm off on the side, I'm going to change the position of my hinge. Like that. I'm going to take these little they're like 3 8 screws. I'm going to double check these just to make sure they are not going to go through. See, they are right on the cusp. But by the time you put the thickness of the metal up here, it should be just about right. That 16th of an inch thickness of the metal is going to keep them from penetrating. The ply, they're made for half inch plywood, but the plywood these days, of course, is a little bit thinner than a half inch. check that before I go with all of them make sure I don't got screw holes sticking through see there it's good nothing coming through I will continue better just to have one screwed up when then all of them all screwed up and of course these are Chinese so the screws they don't fit very well into the driver tips it ain't like back in the old days let me tell you 
then again nothing is there you go there's one nice spring loaded hinge I got these really nice earth magnets I'm going to use so I'm going to go ahead and continue with all those and uh, get back with the one I'm hanging them these are spring loaded hinges so you've got to spring them you've got to spring spring the sprung when you're doing this so I'll line this up on those half inch marks all the way around like that like that and like that so that is right where it goes right there so then I need to push that you need to push those hinges in and spring them a little bit okay and then you're gonna hold that cabinet right there with the hinges in the sprung position I'm gonna put a screw in one I'm going to keep holding it, and I'm going to put one on the bottom one. Hold it in that same sprung position, because if you don't do it when it's sprung, they will move. There. So let's see where I am on my marks. I'm good on my half-inch mark there. I'm good on that one. This one here, I moved just a hair, but not enough to make a difference. So there's those doors. That's what they look like. I'm going to finish those two hinges. I'm going to finish the two screws in that hinge. And then I'm going to get my, uh, I'm going to get those little earth magnets I got. And wherever I put the handle, which is going to be about right here, I'm going to put the handles. And that's where I'm going to put the, the, the magnet, right there. I don't want it down here. I don't want it to be tweaking the door when I go to open it. I want it right where the handle is. Well, that will be my next step. Okay, so the cabinet doors are hung. Time for handles. I'm going to make a little jig for Let's take this little, look at this little jig I made here. So this is my jig. Center mark. It's got the three inches lined out for these. I haven't even tested this yet. Let's just make sure that it works good. I'll bring that down to that mark at six inches, just like that. I'll take my drill bit. And I'll drill that. Sure it's not right on my not right on my thing there which is not a big deal if it is but it's a big deal if I drill into it so let's just see if that works So they're bottoming out. So these are made for a three quarter inch cabinet door. These are only half or seven sixteenths. So I got to take every one of these screws, cut them off and grind the ends so they will fit. So I'm gonna go take a quarter inch off every one of these screws, except for the one for the drawer here, because the drawer is doubled up. The drawer has two layers of half inch. So here I'm gonna actually have to countersink a couple in there. Okay, there's the handles. Now I just got to get the little magnet catches that I have planned for these, and I hope they work. Okay, good morning. We are going to put the final touches on this little camper today, and then we're going to do a final video on this and stick it on the truck. So I have some goodies I bought here. This is the heater that goes in my van. So that's just an Olympian Wave 3 heater. Um, and a propane tank in that little compartment. Uh, that's what I'm going to use for heat for right now. And I'm just harvesting some stuff out of my van. I've got my hose for filling up the water tank. I went and bought some bed linens, some sheets and pillowcases. I got a nice new sleeping bag for my covers in there. Some nice memory foam pillows. So I bought a bunch of new stuff for this camper. This morning I'm going to be putting these little catches on the doors and drawer in the camper here. That's about the last thing I have to do in this camper, except for some hooks to hang my coats up. And I could do a series of hooks on the ceiling also for hanging some bags like they do in some other campers, but I don't really need that yet. So let's get busy on this. So if you remember, the other day I came in here and put these little blocks in 
that's going to accommodate these little catches so they all are nice and secured shut. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Okay, so we're done with that little cabinet project. We're going to do a final walk around on this. Um, okay, so we're done with that. Okay, so we're done with that final little cabinet project that pulls on those doors and drawers. We're going to go ahead and uh, do a final walkthrough on this uh, camper. We're pretty much done with everything in the shop. We're going to load this on the truck later today. Um, try to get to the dump and weigh, try to get to a scale and weigh this thing. See how much it weighs. I'm, I'm projecting about seven or 800 pounds. That would make me real happy. Unloaded, untanked down. and I'm projecting it's going to weigh about seven or 800 pounds not loaded down. So let's just take a look, look around. So let's just take a look around this thing and uh, give you and, sh and show you what it turned out to be. So, you've seen most everything already. So you have the plywood base. This is all foam core fiberglass construction. Very lightweight, all insulated with that solid one inch. You can actually see some of the insulation right over there that I used on the inside of it. And it's epoxy laminated fiberglass to the foam with a clear fur framing on the inside. So it has the clear fur framing. I have the nice RV Rec Pro windows in it. We'll take a look at this door. So I fabricated this door out of a piece of ACX um, um, marine plywood. And you know, the hatch here, the latch here is made for inch and a half door. This is only a three quarter inch door, which comes out to about seven eighths with the fiberglass on both sides laminated, epoxy laminated on. And uh, so I had to build this little spacer for that to work, but you see the door works really nice. So we look in this little compartment here. Pretty much, this is how I'm leaving it. You know, it's all wired up with the 12 volt wiring and it also has the 110 wiring here for the shore power. So this fits a propane tank. I'm not outfitting it right now with a propane tank. I'm gonna use a little portable heater for this little, I'm taking it on a trip here going to Arizona in about a week and that's gonna be the big shakedown cruise. So you could also put in one of the little diesel heaters and the little tank for the diesel fuel in there, depending on what you wanted to do. So there's that little compartment. So let's just go ahead and take a look inside. This does have a latch here to latch this thing. Like that, so the door stays nice and closed. All right, I have my PVC. And, and another thing too is this thing is all epoxied and laminated with um, PVC around the edges. So no water is ever getting in to penetrate that door. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look on the inside here. So the cabinet doors and drawers are all in. You saw me put the, um, you saw me this, this morning I put the latches in, last little project. So the latches all in. So there's our switch panel, all illuminated, and that is all powered with this anchor um, electric generator or power source, power, power bank. So we have 110, you know, we have our car socket here. This powers up all the 12 volt in the whole rig here. You can see right there, if it's not pushed in all the way, it's not a good connection. Push this little button here and we have our display. So we're drawing 14 watts right now. That's running both of these lights. I switched those out. These were came with incandescent bulbs and I switched them out for the little LEDs. Went from 20 watts a bulb down to about three watts a bulb. We have our refrigerator here, which has been running for, oh, about a week now. And I've only, I charged the battery once. It started out with about 65% and I charged it up one other time. And right now we're at about 54. So it's it's ran for about a week on one charge on the anchor there. So these here are just some components I put in here. I have my little Bluetooth stereo, Bluetooth speaker, my little Yamaha amplifier for a guitar if you want to carry that along with you. So this thing here is gravity fed. I have it stuffed in here. You can drive down the road with it in the upright position like that. So you make sure you have no leaky leakies. Or you flip it up, 
pull it out and it works right over the sink right here so I put in an extra large sink for a for a little camper like this because there's no shower in this camper this is where you would lay a towel here and this is all sealed really good this is where you would wash your hair you would shave wash all your pots and pans do all your dishes so you know the sink gets gonna get used a lot in this so that's why I put in that extra large deep sink so this area here is where your cooktop will go so the cooktop just stows down in this cabinet right here you just pull that out when you're ready to use it and set that up and I'm gonna make a pad for this out of that same Durasan rubber that I have lining all the cabinets so that's where that goes when you're cooking or you can take that outside and use it at your picnic bench or at your campsite outside I'm also going to have a one burner butane that I carry along just because a lot of times you just want to heat up some water and you just need a little one burner. So that's the idea with that. Efficiency and, and minimalist is the whole theme here. So there's the chest refrigerator. You can see that is been running like I said for about a week and the wires all run down below and down inside this cabinet deep in here you probably can't see it very well with no lights but I actually have a thing there wired for 12 two 12 volt outlets and a 110 outfit because both the chest and the TV run on 110 or 12 volt and that's a TV slash DVD player so multi-unit thing that I can use on the road for watching movies or anybody can so up here we have a full twin size six inch mattress. This is a bed in a box ordered on Amazon. Nice memory foam mattress. You know, I have some bed linen for this that I purchased. I wanted to do a video before I outfit this with the bed linen because you can do whatever you want with this thing, whoever, whoever has it, whether it's me or if I sell it. The cushions, um, we use some durable marine grade material here for making these cushions. And they're just attached to a piece of quarter inch plywood that I have here. And they're sewn on the corners and stuffed into place. Down in this little compartment, we have our head, which is basically just a bucket. Let me set that up real quick. So basically, I have this set up, so you're just going to set it out here and use it. You know? there's no privacy in this thing it doesn't need to be stashed inside there when you're using it plus that's the right height when it's up there at that height i'd have to build a platform for it to get it up to height and i'm just not ready to do that but that could be done at any time so that is how the toilet works you know and inside of course i've got my biodegradable bags and i keep my toiletries in there and my showering and shaving equipment and all that goes in there then inside that compartment is all the storage and there's the access for tying this down to the camper. So to make that easier, when you, when you lift this refrigerator out of here, this whole little section here lifts out and you can access that really easy. You do have to move the refrigerator, which is fairly lightweight. So there's that down here I did put these little things in these I did put these cabinets with these flip down drawers down here to access these cubbies down below and those all have nice catches on them but you can also access that all by lifting this whole cushion up like this and there you go you have access to all that storage down in there and there's the other access for the tie downs to tie this thing down to the bed of the truck so there's that and I did not paint the inside of those I just left it the raw wood it's all ACX plywood all good stuff and clear fur framing everywhere you can take a look here and see the framing it's all done with clear fur and glued and screwed and tattooed baby So one might think why I made this so narrow and made that bed so big instead of building a settee. So 
You know, my I've done quite a bit of camping, and in my better judgment, in my estimation, or in my opinion, it's best to have a full bed here. I'm gonna line this with pillows, and this is a full bed. You can sleep on this. It's six foot six by 30 inches, and it's got a nice three inch memory foam topper on it. So a, a full grown person can sleep on that comfortably. And for a table, all I did for a table in here, you know, I wasn't going to put a table at all, but I got hit up by a buddy of mine, Pat, said I got to put a table in. So what I did is I put this little table in right here. So here you could sit and eat. Two people can actually sit here and eat. One there and one over here. So you see, two people could use this to, to sit and eat or... This can be a workstation. You know, you can pull this out and put your computer here and use this as a workstation. It's not the heaviest duty thing in the world and that could use some improvement, but it is functional. This has a latch up inside here. You just reach in, unlatch it, push it up, and it latches it shut, and that holds it safe. So that's about the interior of this thing. You can see we use some nice indoor outdoor carpet on all the walls. Charles actually came in and helped me with that. We have the cubbies up forward there for any clothes, shop, socks, shoes, socks, underwear, clothing can go there. And down here alongside this little head, you can put your dirty clothes when you're done with that. So this is a big wide open wall here. This, this has a lot of viewing window space. If you use smaller windows, you can make more cabinet space. This one here, I wanted to see out. I was, I've been in that van so much that you can't see anything in the van. So this thing I wanted to be able to see. So I have some hooks on order that are gonna go up along over here that you can use to hang your clothes and stuff like that. And I still need to figure out something for the curtains, which will come up in a later video when this thing is on the road. So that's about it for the inside of this camper. The next video is going to be with it on the back of my truck and going down the road. coming straighten her out now let's push it right back in that little cubby hole a little bit actually this is probably good right here that's it she's out in all of her glory check that thing out damn nice all right we're gonna put the jacks on it and load this thing up on the truck So that's going to conclude this video. Thanks for watching.